Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to those who are joining us online. It's just a great thing to just be together in the house of the Lord. Will you just stand with us, please, as we worship in spirit and in truth this morning? Won't cover 
just remain in the attitude of worship this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can count on you to be our champion.
in this place, Lord. Just, just let us take some time this morning just to acknowledge just how good our God is. Just to thank Him for being our champion. Just to say that we can call upon that name, the name of Jesus. There is no other name but that name Jesus. And there is power in that name, Jesus. And because of the power of his name, we can stand here knowing that we will have the victory. We will have the victory. You know, in Philippians, Philippians 2, verse 9, it says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him, Jesus, the name that is above every name. And that at the name of Jesus, <laughs> every knee should and will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue, or voices, or praise, or worship, will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we will do this to the glory of God the Father. Let us worship Jesus.
morning and welcome to Westside this morning. Go ahead and take a seat. If this is your first Sunday with us, I just want to say a special welcome. If you're joining us online, extra special welcome. It's summer. It's summer. This weekend, I love this weekend. It like the the vibes in the air. Like I'm, I sound really cool now. Um, it, it, the smell of barbecue, chlorine, campfires, like screaming children protesting sunscreen. It's like the best time. Summer is here, and I hope that this long weekend you have found a way to connect with nature, with the people you love, and have just come out of the coldness and are, are just enjoying that. Uh, so thank you for making us part of your long weekend, and I hope that, you know, it continues to get good. We still have one more day. It's awesome. Uh, like I said, if it's your first time here, my name is Kaylee, if we haven't met, and this is, yeah, this is Westside. And if you are new here, just reach into the pocket in front of you. There's this card, it's called the Connect card. And if you're new, fill it out. When the service is done, you can head to the lobby. We have amazing door holders that would love to say hello to you. They have a new a little gift for you and just want to welcome you. This gives us a chance to get to know you a little bit better. So please fill it out and do that. Uh, also, if you've been with us for a little bit, you know that next Sunday we are putting together a food drive in partnership with uh, Wesley Ministries, a nonprofit organization here in Hamilton. And it's actually our US side youth that meet on Monday nights, the senior and junior highs, that are preparing this and, and planning this and, and putting together that as a step of faith and serving in the community. So we are helping with that and doing a food drive. Uh, there on our website and our social media has a more extensive list of the things that they need. Uh, so next Sunday, help us fill the lobby, help us partner with the youth. Please join this. This is a great organization that we are excited to serve in this way. And lastly, here at Westside, we don't get to do the things that we do without the generous partnership of you guys each and every single week in a financial giving. Uh, if you would like to partner with us financially and like to give, uh, there are several ways that we have that happen. Uh, online giving at westsidehamilton.com slash give. They have all the prompts. You can use uh, different methods of payment there. In person, in the lobby, through cash, credit, check, uh, or automate your giving. Again, in the seat pocket in front of you, there's a card that you can fill out and we'll reach out to you this week. And we just automate it in whatever capacity that you want. So it just comes off each month, week, that kind of thing, uh, just to create a little bit less stress in your life. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, we are so excited. Uh, Pastor John Latta will be speaking this morning. Uh, but before he does that, I just want to pray for him and pray for our service. So please join me. Father God, thank you. Thank you for how good you are. Thank you for the name of Jesus as the worship has led us uh, just to be able to praise you this morning. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to freedom uh, openly and freely meet each week, that we can raise our hands in worship each week openly. And we just ask, Lord, that you will open our hearts to the message of Pastor John, that you will bless him and provide uh, your spirit in him and his words as he speaks to us this morning. We just give this service to you, Lord. All of this is for your glory. And we just thank you for each and every single person here with us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Kaylee, and thanks, band. Um, my name is John, Pastor John I'm still not comfortable with, but that's okay. I've been in ministry almost 30 years, and you're going to hear a lot more about that in the future, not necessarily today. I have to bring my coffee up today. Sorry, there's a frog in my throat or, or something that's happening. Um, but uh, I just enjoyed that worship this morning, and I thought that if you were here live, which we all are here, but if you're online, uh, I hope that somehow uh, that the worship that was sung today and the praise of the heart, especially the band, but all of us, was conveyed over uh, the, online, the, li the online teaching, or the online live stream. See, I need to get all used to this. I have notes, and the reason why I have notes is because there's two things we're going to do today. One is, um, I'm going to try and do my best to bring a bit of a review to what we've been learning the last few weeks that, that Pastor Dave Steimers, is that what you call him? I call him Dave, so sorry, that Dave Steimers has been giving us for the past few weeks. And the other thing that we are going to be doing today is we are going to be taking communion. 
and we're going to be doing that together. So those of us that are sitting here with us live and in person, uh, one of these little cups is in front of you, and apparently they're in the seat. I didn't even know this, but these seats have a perfect little holder for these cups, and so just so you're aware, that is going to be available to you um, coming up at the end of the service. The other part is, excuse me, and if you're live stream, maybe you can prepare now to get a wafer or a cookie or a bread or wine or juice or Coke. I don't care what it is, but something that we can do communion together and we do not want anybody to feel left out. If you are new to us, I am not the pastor of this church. I've just come on recently, in fact, only in the past month or so, and it's been a phenomenal experience. But the pastor, that is Dave Steimers, Pastor Dave Steimers. You're going to hear his name a lot. We just call him Dave. Okay, we just call him Dave. This is his first Sunday away. He is gone on sabbatical for three months. The good news is you will not have to hear me for three months. We have some various teachers that are happening and coming. But when the cat is away, what is it? The mice will play? Is that what they say? Anyway, Dave's mom is here and attends church, so we can't play that much. But we just welcome you here today, and I always think about long weekends, and uh, when Kaylee, you were saying that about long weekends, I always think about the people who go to church are obviously the ones that don't own a cottage. (laughs) You're obviously also the ones that don't have friends that have cottages either. So we're going to need to pray about that in the future too, but wherever you are and God has you today, I just pray that somehow this message that God's Spirit will speak into you and that I will have those words to say that will do that. So one of the things Dave did ask, um, he said, John, over the summertime though, would you do your best uh, to let people know a little bit about who you are? And I thought that today might be a great opportunity for you to be introduced to our family. And so Christy and I have been married 33 years um, this week. So we actually went out to a restaurant. That's all you do when, after 33 years. You figure it out. But we have... We've been married 33 years, and here's the amazing part about us. I am an only child, and Christy is one of nine. And so I'm giving you more information than I've ever gave the church that I was at before, but that is, is that the, I remember like that first time that we met, and I, I mean, I didn't say I was an only child or, or one of nine, but I'm hearing her talk a lot about brothers and sisters, and, and then I was realizing like, holy cow, like, That's nine's a lot of people to come from. And so what's very interesting about that is like I married and as an only child into her nine. And so there's a lot of adjustments when you get married. Um, And some of them are, they're all good. I was about to say both good and not so good. But no, no, no. They're also wonderful adjustments. But then we get married and then here's our family. I think there's a picture that's up there. And so our family is that we make our own family as well. And so here's very quickly, uh, these are members of our family. So we actually have three kids, is that we have two daughters and one son. And maybe you know some of our kids if you're in the area here, but our oldest daughter is named Olivia. She's married to Mike. His name's Mike Bronson. They've actually planted a church down in Bimbrook. And uh, our, we have two grandkids, Noah and Selah. They're our kids, by the way, like, and we just couldn't be prouder of, of our grandkids. And so we also have a middle daughter, Eliza. She's wearing the hat. She's single. Um, she, and then Eli is on this side, and he's single too, but shoot, this is going to be recorded on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> I thought we could keep that secret. We couldn't be proud of our family. But part of why I say that is because I was an only child. I marry into a family of nine I become part of this family, but then we become family together after Christy and I have our own kids. And I actually found that kind of interesting is because in these early stages of us uh, having a conversation with Dave about joining West uh, West Side here, it's like we're joining another family. I want to tell you a little bit more before I go on, though, about Christy's family, and that is this, is that not only did... Oh, by the way, we have a newest member of our family who haven't got in there. We have Sully. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Christy just had this little, she didn't have it. We bought a little puppy. <laughs> and Sully's now more than anything. Uh, yeah, she, uh, Sully and the grandkids, by the way, are taking more time in our family than anything. Anyway, what I was going to say to you, though, is that that family I moved into now has, now I have 12 in-laws, that's brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws, and now also we have 31, I have 31, Christy and I have 31 nephews and nieces. And so from an only child perspective, that became big family, didn't it? 
Now, here's actually part of the caveat of this. One of Christy's sisters contributed 15 kids, so that's a whole other story. Please talk to her about that later over coffee. <laughs> but the reality of it is, is that I remember the first time I went, we were dating, and Christy was in, from Ridgeway, uh, down in the Niagara area, and I was from Scarborough. And I remember dating, we went one of these uh, weekends down to Christy's, pla Christy's place, and not all the siblings were living at home anymore, but still, we had breakfast together, and it was so early in the morning, but that's a whole other story. And I remember having this first meal, and drinking this white, what I thought was milk, and it turned out to be powdered milk. And recognizing that as an only child, I could go into the refrigerator, get a bag of milk anytime I wanted, and just drink as much as I wanted. In this family of nine, they actually had powdered milk to make sure that they could actually get through a week. And I'm not kidding you, have you tasted powdered milk? Maybe some of you have. It just wasn't very palatable for someone who, that, that had, must have had this amazing, I just love milk, that's another story. So why I only say that is because these are like some of the adjustments. And, uh, Christie's uh, dad was a pastor, and it was like uh, down in rural area, and so this is just how they grew up. And so these are some of the adjustments that we made. And so I found that in heading into the topic today, and this just doing a bit of review, it just reminded me of those early stages of joining uh, the family that I'm part of. So I don't know um, if you are here and you're just visiting for the first time or you're visiting for the tenth time, or maybe you are uh, church hopping or church shopping or coming out of COVID and maybe just starting to get back with people, or maybe you do call Westside Church home. I don't know where you are at. I'm just glad that you are joining us today. And I just pray that maybe the message that we have today might, might speak to you. Last Sunday was super encouraging. Um, we went to, is it, the, is it called Next or Next Class? I'm still trying to figure out the language. But whatever it was that we went to, there's a bunch of us uh, that, that basically have just been tr found out about Westside and are starting to just wanting to know more information. There was like 30 to 40 people, no exaggeration, in this, in this room downstairs just learning about Westside. There was something that was just very, very exciting happening. And then you go into the gymnasium, and there was a bunch of parents meeting together with their kids. And in this, um, is it called Parent Connect? See, I'm still learning things. But whatever it was, there was a bunch of people in this room, and I'm sure there was 100 people in that room. Like, this is pretty exciting times, I think, for this church. And so I can see why Dave, going on his, th his three-month sabbatical, which is an amazing thing for him to do, he's also excited to come back. Because in reality, is that we're in some interesting times of transition. And I was just texting with somebody this week that said they're looking for a new church. They don't live in this area, because I was trying to encourage them to join us. But they said, John, it is hard. It is hard. So I hope that we at Westside, through some of the things that we're going to talk about today, can just dream about the future of what we look like, so that many others can see something very healthy, and they can be strengthened in their own faith journey. Um, <clears throat> there's usually about three things that kind of make us who we are in terms of church and gives us a bit of identity. Uh, one of the things would be, um, what do you believe? And if you haven't heard that before, uh, Dave did a series about two years ago called DNA, and it's on YouTube. I'd encourage you to go and look at that. That's more of a theological perspective of who Westside is. The other, part, the other thing is, is that Westside is part of BIC Canada. That's Be In Christ Canada from a denomination point of view. And if you're interested, go and look at that uh, Be In Christ Canada website. That shows the accountability and the umbrella that we are under as a church. But what Dave's been speaking recently about is this idea of Westside core values. This is like when you come here, this is what you get, and this is what you should feel. And these are the types of things that I would say, if these things resonate with you, this is where we're going to call home. Uh, my understanding was that some of these core values are are um, some of these areas that the leadership, Dave and the leadership, went away and they looked at as opportunities into the future. And so let's look at them now. Um, the first one that Dave spoke about, and by the way, all of these are on YouTube. I'm going to touch on them super quick and do a little teaching, and then I'm going to hand over communion to Christy. Is that the um, uh, first one is called belonging. And uh, uh, Dave said this. He said, Jesus was a friend of sinners. What if instead of building more fencer, fences, we just tried to be friends? 
when we start thinking about where we feel like I want to hang out and meet other people, this idea of belonging is so important. All of us, all of us here and the people that are outside these walls need to feel safe, they need to feel valued, and they need to feel included as well. Stats are telling us these days, especially pre-COVID and now actually after COVID, and I don't know if you've heard about this before, but not only in the UK, the United Kingdom, and now in Canada, they've done some surveys where loneliness is becoming like rampant. And they say that one in every 10 people aged 15 and older are saying that they always are often feeling lonely. Those who are frequently lonely, they report poor mental health, lower levels of overall life satisfaction, and those were the lonely, those were the ones that were only feeling lonely less often. I don't know about you, but I think the church needs to look at loneliness and say, that's something that we can help others in. And this area of feeling like we belong is so critical, especially in the area of mental health. And so I'm hoping that at Westside we can look and look in the future of that. The second thing Dave talked about was this idea of growing together. Dave said, the church needs you, your personality, your gifts, your contribution. You know, there's a lot of reasons why people don't attend church, and I'm sure that a bunch of you identify with that. But when we talk about this idea of growing, it really comes around two basic things. One is, are you learning anything? And number two is, are you serving? (laughs) It's pretty easy. And so when we look at growing together, and I love this, I'm glad the leadership targeted this, is that when we're doing life together in a healthy way, what that means is we need to be learning and in a posture of taking information in so that what? We can help other people and we can be serving. Uh, In Dave's message, and I can't remember what date that one was, he actually targeted, it was a really quick line, but it was actually the last sermon I spoke at the church I was at previously. And this idea is that I, it's that too many people over many years haven't committed to grow spiritually because they are spiritually immature. Spiritually immature. You know, I'm quite a bit older than most of you here. And unfortunately, there's been many people my age or even older that have followed, they followed Jesus their entire lives. But somewhere along their lives, they plateaued completely. And quite frankly, they've acted more as spiritually immature teenagers than spiritually mature adults. And I apologize for that within my generation. But I would say to you, let's not let that happen with us or other generations to follow. That's why we grow. We don't grow to be more immature. We grow to be mature and to find out what that means to be a follower of Jesus. I think one of the key reasons why we come to church actually is to grow. Compassion. Um, Dave said, when we look to meet needs, we find Jesus. When we find Jesus, we find life. you got to go back to this one. On May 8th, Dave told this story of how in this church, around Christmas time, my understanding was is that they were doing a, uh, a drive or something to, to raise money for a project. I think the project was to change the carpets or to do something kind of internally. All I remember is the first Sunday Christy and I came here, we walked in and went, oh my goodness, look at the frayed carpets. <laughs> By the end of that message on May 8th when we were here, I walked away going, oh my goodness, I love those frayed carpets. Dave reminded us on that week how, yes, the plan was to do some things internally around this building. And by the way, let me just push uh, pause a second, is that there has been a plan at Westside, a three-pronged plan at Westside that, to work with the kids' ministry area, to work with the office area, and then to work with the rest of this area. So it's not like that isn't on hold. There still is a building plan in that way. But the idea of this uh, joining Food for Kids Hamilton, where over 1,200 uh, kids in over 60 schools aren't being fed properly and are depending upon a system to help them be fed outside their home. And then Dave, sorry if I'm, it was an Elton John concert? Sorry, he, at an Elton John concert, God speaks to Dave and says, look, we have that $30,000 we're trying to raise, but we've got to turn the numbers around. We actually have to give that money away for the kids. So now when I look at the frayed carpet, I go, are you kidding me? This is exactly where I want to be. I want to be in a place where we use the carpets and make them well used. Okay, now I'm actually going to tell you a story that's not in my notes. 
I was in youth ministry. See, this is on YouTube, but that's okay. Um, I was in youth ministry when I started uh, when I start, started in ministry, and that's getting back almost oh my goodness, 25 years ago per se. And we had put brand new carpets into this youth area. We put this youth room up and new carpets in the area. And I remember to the I remember like it was yesterday, getting called into one of the pastor's offices and being told, "You do know we put those new carpets in there." you do know that you guys are basically staining those carpets and they're getting kind of wrecked and the whole bit. And I actually went, like, isn't that my job as a pastor to, like, get these carpets wrecked and sort of to go through these as many times as you want? And why I say that is because when we see stuff used and frayed and whatever, of course we want to replace it. Our job is to wear the carpets out. And so I just think... Thank, thank you uh, to the leadership for making compassion and even this story is that there's needs all around us and as we want to invest in Dundas and Ancaster and the west side area that even if we replace these carpets that at some point we will see these carpets worn out. That is what our job is. The next week was uh, on mission. And this was last week. No, was this last week? Okay. Okay. Um, And Dave said this, he said, I believe God has called Westside Church to be a Jesus-centered church that is for unchurched people. God is working all around us. God is working in areas and places that we would not expect. And the good news of Jesus Christ is actually an amazing invitation for people, and they don't even know it if we do not bring Jesus to them. And so when we're on mission, we want to say, bottom line, we want to introduce people to Jesus. Whether that's unchurched people, or we call it spiritually curious, or maybe they're your co-workers, or they're your friends, or they're your neighbors, or they're your relatives, is that part of the core values of this church is to make sure that the good news of Jesus isn't just for us, but it's for other people. And so it shouldn't surprise us in the future as we take opportunities to use this building and to go out into the world around us to make sure that we are all about being on mission to introduce people to Jesus. And then, this is a little caveat, Dave didn't speak on this, but next week you're going to hear about next generation, the core value of next generation. Now, why are you bringing that up, John, now? Is because the youth team couldn't do this week <laughs> because of the way schedules worked, and so I just bumped it up a week. And so pretend it's like um, uh, watching a Netflix show, you get everything, then you get a bonus episode. I don't know. But the point is, next week, we're going to hear about the final core value, and that's the next generation. And Zach's going to be, Zach Boot's going to be with the youth team, and we're going to have some youth and some youth team here, and I'm looking forward to that week. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. So I'm going to give this credit to Jesus because we haven't heard from Zach yet. Don't get between them. That is my child, the children and me. These children are the kingdom's pride and joy. And that's Jesus. Christy and I, when we were looking to see what's next in terms of where we wanted to plant our feet in ministry, this was super important. We just really believe that we need to be handing off ministry and opportunity for people to follow Jesus to the next generation all the time. I don't care how old you are sitting here. You need to think younger. You need to be thinking about those who are coming on behind. I love how many children are around here. I love the youth part of what we're doing here. I love the fact that even people, by the way, some of our youth that will be joining next week aren't from this church, naturally. They're from the neighborhood, have been part of this church through some of the youth ministries. And so their families don't even attend. Is that right? I think someone told me that. So, well, of course, we want their families to attend. But my point is, it's still so exciting to see what's happening with that as well. Um, and just a little, I'll give you another. Kaylee already mentioned it too. But think about it now. Take a picture. Do whatever you can. Is that next week, support the youth by helping bring some of those uh, for the food drive for, for Wesley Urban Ministry. I think that would be super encouraging for our youth uh, as, as they are doing their best to support ministries as well. I'm going to give you a little brief teaching, and then we're going to give it to Christy so that she can give communion. So as I was thinking about um, just giving you a bit of scripture from a review perspective, um, we can never go wrong 
when we teach about Jesus or when we're reminded of what Jesus taught. And so at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, that's, that's Matthew 5, 6, and 7, at the very end of his, Jesus' teaching, he, he gives us this reminder. And here's what I like most about when Jesus teaches. He always gives illustrations to fit his audiences. He'll give illustrations to fit, um, like, gardeners. He loves people who eat food because he talks about food and wine all the time. He also, like, talks about finances and he talks about society. But my illustration today goes along with what I've bumped into at Westside is that we've got a bunch of builders and contractors here. And so I decided to take that passage, and this is from Matthew 7, 24 to 29, and it says this. And maybe some of you sung, sung this song uh, when you were in uh, Sunday school. See, Sunday, it was called Sunday school back. We didn't have all these great names. It's called Sunday school back in the day. Um, so, and we used to sing about this. And so this is from Matthew 7, 24 to 29. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as someone who had authority and not as the, teacher, teachers of, uh, the teachers of the law. If we were in a bit of a Bible study together, I'd be saying to you, what do you observe from this passage? And because we don't have time, I'd actually love to do that. What do you observe, first of all? First of all, you have wise and foolish, and you have rock and sand. The wise... I'd love to ask our contractors this, because I'm sure it's true. If you're wise, you're going to build on a solid foundation. Wise build on rock. The foolish build on sand. If you go back to, I believe it was, oh man, I've got the, the date on January of, is it 2010 that an earthquake happened in Haiti? Is that right? Do you remember that? I think it's around that time. You could Google it if you want. There's an earthquake that happened in Haiti. I think the magnitude was about 7 on the Richter scale. And then about a month later, or maybe two months later, another earthquake happened in Chile, and, the, and the, uh, it was about 8.4, 8.5 on a Richter scale. So it was a greater earthquake, quite frankly, in Chile than it was in Haiti. But if you remember back that long, see, I'm older, so I remember 10 years like that. You guys are probably like, what? I need to look that up. But here's the deal. If you go back and look at those two earthquakes were basically about a month and a half away, one had greater, greater, greater devastation than the other. That's the one in Haiti. To this day, they're still trying to get rebuilt from. And what you find out is you find out, you find out how things were built. One was built on more of a sandy, more, a less solid foundation, where in Chile it wasn't. It was built on more of a solid foundation. And I guess why I'm saying that is because Jesus calls to be wise and not foolish, to have a faith foundation on solid rock. So that's number one observation. The second observation, if you read this passage, and just read it slowly, the storms come to who? The wise or the foolish? Excuse me, the wise or the foolish? The rock or the sand? Where do the storms come? Storms come to both. We can't get away from storms. And I would say to you that the storms of life can take us down. And this is why we need to individually have our own faith built on a solid foundation. But we also need our church built on a solid foundation as well. And that is what I'm happy to say that I really believe that Westside is heading in that direction. So these past few weeks, Dave has outlined these foundational values, which I believe are absolutely solid. And then my final thought would be in this, and this is back from that passage. Can you guys throw that up once more? Is that, in, is that what we need to recognize that is in Matthew 7, in 20, the verse, first verse it says this, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. Jesus is the core. All these values are surrounding Jesus. These are Jesus' words that we're putting into practice. And even though we have these great ideas, we still need to recognize that the final words of Jesus he reminded in his Sermon on the Mount were, these are my words. 
and I'm the solid foundation. Jesus is the core at Westside. I'm going to hand this over to Christy, and uh, let me pray first, and then we are going to uh, join in communion and celebrate communion together. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much just for an opportunity to remind, be reminded of some of the things that we've been taught over the last few weeks, and to also recognize, Father, that when we come, we come to you because of Jesus. And so, Father, I pray that those of us that are part of this West Side community, and maybe some people that are visiting, or whoever that might be that are listening to these words now, will come back to say, Lord, I need to build my life on you because you are the solid rock and the solid rock that no matter what storm comes to my life, comes to us as a community, that we will still stand firm. So Lord, as we go and celebrate your son Jesus today, we just pray that we will do this with hearts that are open to the love that you have for us. In your name we pray, amen. So we just want to take a few moments to celebrate Jesus, who we've been talking about this morning. Jesus, our beautiful Jesus, who did not have his life taken, but who laid it down for us. The, um, the cross is also called the Great Exchange. And here is what Jesus did and the exchange he made for us. Jesus was punished so that we can be forgiven. Jesus was wounded so that we can be healed. Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness so that we can be made righteous with his righteousness. Jesus died our death so that we can receive his life. Jesus endured our poverty so that we can share in his abundance. Jesus bore our shame so that we can share in his glory. Jesus endured our rejection so that we may have his acceptance with God the Father. And Jesus was made a curse so that we can receive his blessing. That is our beautiful, beautiful Jesus. And we want this morning to celebrate, to reflect, to remember all he did for us because of his great love for us so that we could be in relationship and in union and in oneness with Jesus. And so just before we um, take the elements, I want us just to take one moment of silence. And we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to show us if there's anything, anything within us that maybe we need to just bring to Jesus and receive forgiveness or cleansing for. Because the Bible tells us we don't want to take this in a manner that's unworthy. We want to have clean hands and we want to have pure hearts before Jesus as we take communion today. So just for one moment, we're going to allow the Holy Spirit just within each of our hearts to show us if there is anything. And you talk to Jesus about it. And then we will share in communion together. So let's take that moment of quiet.
Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. This morning, as we take our wafer, the... um, cups and the wafers are just in that little hook in front of you there. Okay, the first time I used one of these, I could not get it open, so this one has a separate peel for the wafer and then another peel for the the wine. But as we take this wafer, as we remember Jesus' body broken for us, let's remember in light of this scripture from Isaiah Whatever the Holy Spirit showed you in that moment of silence, it's paid for. It's done. You're forgiven. Jesus paid for it. If you are living with, um, Jesus paid the punishment for our peace. So if you are living in anxiety or fear or without peace in your life, Jesus paid for it. And you can live and walk in peace because he paid for it. And by his wounds, we are healed. We are healed spiritually. We are healed emotionally. We are healed mentally. And we are healed physically because Jesus already paid for it. So as we take this and eat it together, let's eat knowing Jesus paid the price. So let's eat together. First Corinthians 11 says, In the same way, after they eat, Jesus took the cup of wine. He said, This cup represents the new agreement from God, which begins with my blood sacrifice. When you drink this, do it to remember me. Let's remember the sacrifice of Jesus as we drink it together. Let's just pray. Jesus, how we thank you. How we thank you for what it cost you that we could be here, that we could have a relationship with you. And, Father, we want today to just um, offer you our lives again. It kind of feels like it's the least, but it's the most we can do out of your great, profound, incredible gift to us, we offer ourselves back to you. And so here we are, Father. I pray that you would fill us fresh with your Holy Spirit, fresh with your strength, fresh with your power, fresh with the realization of what the cross did that exchange. May we live out of that exchange. May we be people who live with profound hope, profound joy, profound peace, profound victory, because you already paid for it, and you already declared the victory. And so we give ourselves to you. Use us for your kingdom and your glory. And thank you, beautiful Jesus, for your love and for your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with me once more?
Well, thank you for joining us. That's, we had a great Sunday today. I have um, uh, actually some specifics for next week in terms of the food drive. And that is they are asking for some personal hygiene items like shampoo, toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorant, etc., rice, cooking oil, and then some kids' snacks of juice boxes, etc. If you need a reminder of that, um, please join uh, the Hamilton, what is it, Westside Hamilton Instagram. I think you'll be able to find it there, but there are some specific items that they're looking for next week. But because you don't own a cottage or friends with a cottage, we have donuts for you today. We have donuts and coffee, and please hang out for a little bit if you can and just meet some people maybe that you've never met before, and that will be at the back. But any, any, any way that we can say this, we just want you to have a wonderful week. God bless you. Go in peace. See you later. <laughs>